So recently, a very close blood relative of mine was diagnosed with melanoma. Welcome to the Aegis Runner. I'm Ralph. Hey, if you enjoy running and learning about running, please subscribe to my channel by clicking that subscribe icon down in the corner of this video. So recently, a close blood relative of mine was diagnosed with melanoma. Fortunately, it was found very early. Uh, he's going to be fine. There'll be no issues going forward other than being careful and being monitored. But it got me thinking that I need to be careful because running is basically an outdoor sport. I know we go into the gym. You might do a treadmill. You might do an elliptical. You might do something like that. But the bulky running is going to be outside and we need to protect ourselves from the sun. And maybe you didn't know this, but skin cancer is the most common cancer. One out of five people have skin cancer in their lifetime. And so if we're running outside, we need to protect ourselves. And so I started doing some research. What's the best way that I should be protecting myself when I'm out running? Because I like being running out in the sun. I'm sure you do too. It's wonderful to be out there, but we need to be careful and protect ourselves. We don't want skin cancer. We don't want to hurt our skin and maybe have an unfortunate uh, event with cancer. So in my research, I found a couple of sites very helpful. One was the Skin Cancer Foundation. I'll put their link down below if you want to research stuff for yourself. But I've learned uh, a couple of basic things I want to share for you. But let's start with a basic primer on UV rays. So UV spectrum really goes from 100 nanometer wavelengths to 400 nanometer wavelengths and it's really divided into three sections. UV, UVA, UVB, and UVC. Now the shortest wavelengths are UVC and we don't really talk much about that because even though they're the most damaging to their skin, they're blocked by the atmosphere. They really don't reach us here, here on, on, the, on the ground. So we don't worry too much about UVC. Now the middle wavelengths are UVB. That's what gives you your short-term sunburn. You go outside with nothing on and you go in later and feel your face is all right because you got sunburn. That's due to UVB and that can cause skin cancer. In fact, the SPF ratings on sunscreens are based on UVB rays. Now the longest wavelengths are UVA. Those those penetrate deeper in our skin. They cause long-term tanning, maybe a long-term burn. And for a long time, uh, the experts didn't think UVA rays caused any long-term damage. But now they think it causes damage either to cellular level or even in the DNA and can cause skin cancer. The other thing UVA rays are bad for are our eyes. They can increase the risk of cataracts and macular degeneration. So what do we do? So we're going to talk about three areas of protection. One is sunscreen, one is clothing, and the last is our eyes. So we all know about sunscreen. We may know what SPF is, solar protection factor. Uh, that's a rating that tells you a multiplier of how much radiation you get with or without it. For example, an SPF of 30 means that you get as much radiation in 30 minutes with the sunscreen as you would get in one minute without the sunscreen. So that's what SPF of 30. The Skin Cancer Foundation recommends you use at least an SPF of 30 and it needs to be broad spectrum. Those needs to protect against UVA and UVB. So make sure you see that on the bottle. Now, one thing I didn't realize about sunscreen, there's really two types. Maybe you didn't know this either. One is mineral-based and one is not mineral-based. By mineral base, it means it contains things like zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. And you put that on your skin, that actually reflects or blocks the UV rays from coming in contact with your skin. The non-mineral uh, based sunscreens work with chemicals that absorb the UV radiation. Now, both mineral and non-mineral are effective. There's no one's better than the other. It's really a matter of personal choice. The mineral ones can be a little harder to work in your skin. You could always, uh, sometimes you know you've got a mineral one if you've got more of a white um, a cast on your skin because it's not rubbed in well. But get a, get a sunscreen that's SPF of 30 and put that on and use it every two hours. Now the second area is our clothes. There's a factor I had never heard of, although I may have run across it, and that is UPF, ultraviolet protection factor. That's entirely different than SPF. SPF, of course, as we said, is a kind of a multiplier of exposure time. UPF is a rating on the amount of UV rays that will penetrate or go through your clothing to your body. So UPF of 50 means that 1 50th or 2% of solar radiation will go through that clothing and come in contact with your body. One, uh, a UPF of 30 would mean 1 30th or a little over 3% will come in contact with your body through your clothes. So the Skin Cancer Foundation says a UPF of 30 to 49 is very good and a UPF rating of 50 plus is excellent. So start being aware, look at the UPF ratings on your clothes. I'm trying to get clothes that are UPF 50, put on my head or around you know, my shirts. Um, certainly a 30 minimum, but I like to get 50. I'll put a link down below. There's a site I found that sells only UPF 50 plus clothing. It's called Coolabar. And again, a link down below. Feel free to check them out. I've bought a few things. I get no compensation from them. It's just my own personal recommendation. Check that out. So 
be aware uh, of the clothes you put on on your body. For example, a plain old cotton T-shirt has a UPF of about five. That means only that means 20% of the solar radiation is going to go through that cotton T-shirt on your body. Not a good thing. Now, the way they get these UPF readings are a couple ways: how close the weave is, the type of material, and chemical treatments. A lot of the clothes get similar chemicals or minerals in sunscreen. They might have those in, integrated into the clothes, and that will give us that UPF rating. Some fibers naturally absorb it. For example, wool, merino wool. I have a couple of merino wool uh, running shirts. Merino wool naturally absorbs UVA and UVB rays. But check out the UPF. Make sure you get something that's at least a 30, shoot for 50, and protect yourself. The last area of protection are our eyes. As I said, UVA rays can increase the risk of cataracts or macular degeneration. So anything you put on your eyes, make sure it blocks UVA rays. Your, your sunglasses, make sure it blocks 99 to 100% of UV rays. Uh, even clear glasses like I have on here, I actually wrote the manufacturer and found out the lenses I have here block about 95, 98% of the UV rays. I'm actually just, I need a new glasses, so order new glasses, but pick the lens that they say blocks 100% of UV rays. They don't have to be tinted. They don't have to be tinted to block UV rays. It's actually in the lens. So you want to make sure the lens, whether it's tinted or not tinted, uh, block 99 to 100% of UVA rays uh, coming into your eyes. So be careful out there. Please protect your body when you're out running in the sun. Enjoy the sun, but make sure you decrease your risk of skin cancer or a problem with your eyes. Please use sunscreen. Please use proper glasses and use clothing and protect from UV, UV rays. Hey, thanks again. I know this wasn't my typical video about running, but I felt very personal about this. Uh, I want to make sure we're all protected. It can hit close to home when you never know it. So be careful out there. Enjoy running in the sun and enjoy the summer. Thanks again for watching. If you don't mind, please subscribe to my channel by clicking that subscribe icon. Thank you very much.